Hello and welcome to From the Field from Ag Explore. My name is Gunther Kreps. I'm the Executive Vice President with the company and I'm happy to be here today to do our final wrap up during the growing season for From the Field. This year we've had a lot of episodes. We've talked about a lot of things. We've talked a lot about a lot of agronomics and we've based them around five phases. And those five phases is that first one we call the foundation phase. That's our uh, from, the, from the combine to the planter. Everything that we do from the time we leave that field with the combine to when we stick a seed in it. So that's your plow down, your soil testing, your uh, field work, your residue management, all the things that we think about before we go in there with the planter. After that, we, we focused really heavily in on that uh, establishment phase, talking about that seedling, getting it up and getting it going and the importance of that early season root establishment, especially in corn, right? When we think about corn, remember guys, corn has two root systems. And that first root system is called the seminal root system. And that's the one that comes out of the seed, and that's that radical. And if you think about corn, this little baby corn plant was determined in its yield potential when it lives off the nutrients and energy held in that seed, plus what it gets out of that seminal root system. And from V3, which, which a V stage is a lot like my shirt collar, right? So it's going to have a V in the front and a ring around the back of the leaf. From V3 through V5, that plant is determining its yield potential and the number of, of kernels around. And this year right here, we have a 18 around, right? Which is a typical one that I have in this field behind me where I have an untreated section. It's constantly or consistently 16 around. So by managing through that phase, we were able to set two more kernels around, which in itself is about a 12 and percent increase in kernel set. Now that does not mean a guaranteed 12 and percent increase in yield if we just do that in that phase. Data would show you that it's typically a two to 3% for every two more kernels around that you add. So for easy math, if you're in a 200 bushel corn crop, two to 3% is another four to six bushels, which is a nice yield bump. But guys, I'll tell you what, if we can do that and then manage it through those next phases that we talked about with from the field, that's where we can turn this from a two to 3% into a seven, eight, 10, 12, 15%. And that's what we do. And that's what we focus on. So we went from that, that foundation or that, that, um, uh, establishment phase, and we went into what we call the architecture phase, which is personally my favorite phase. So that's where the industry calls it the vegetative stage, which I think is way too generic. I talk about architecture because these plants are structures. Leaves are so much more than just a solar panel. They are also a fuel tank. I love asking the question if you have, you know, for your farmers that watch, do you just have a 100 gallon diesel fuel tank on your farm? The answer is no, that's laughable, right? So the reason you don't is because when it's go time, you need the fuel on the farm, right? When it's time to plant corn, it's time to plant beans, or time to plant cotton for you guys in the South or rice, you've got to have that diesel fuel sitting there, right? So you've got it to go to the field. You can't be waiting for 100 gallon drops every single time you need fuel. And you know, think about the fall time. When it's time to shell corn or, or, um, or take off canola up North, you've got to have it there right? For those harvesters and for your semis and for your catch carts. So um, it's essential that we build a big fuel tank, right? On top of just having something to collect sunlight and photosynthesize. After the architecture phase, we are now into and coming out of the reproduction phase. So when this corn starts shooting tassel and the silks come out, we have a, a situation where we're thinking about pollination. And this is where mother nature really steals it from us. Typically when we get into July and August, so I'm sitting in Indiana right now, but in the Midwest, we typically start to get hot and a little bit dry. This year has been a little exception to the rule. We've been hot and wet. So we've had the moisture this year. We just had, we've not been dry. So it's been kind of a nice year for pollinating. Uh, we didn't have the stresses right here where I live in Northwest Indiana. When you see stresses come during the reproduction phase and pollination phase, this is where we experience a yield loss called tip back. And tip back is this loss right up here. So if you can see this on the camera, this is where we start to set back a little bit, right? And pull back that, that yield potential. This one filled out fairly nice for the, for the year that we've had. So I'm pretty happy with this cornfield behind us. Um, I didn't go out and walk it this morning because it's awful wet this morning. Um, but this, this, this cornfield, I have been out in it. It pollinated very well. Another thing that I've noticed is I don't have skips in here. As you know, when we shoot, shoot, um, shoot uh, the, the, the silks and we get in pollination, 
A lot of times if we have a stress event, whether it's too hot, too dry, or excessive um, cloud cover during pollination, we can see a lot of skips that happen in here. And that's a real yield loss. So not just tip back, but the skips as well. This one filled out extremely nice. So I don't see any skips that happened in here. So we had perfect pollinating weather where I live. But we're moving from, from that reproduction phase into what's called the final phase of maturity. And that's where I'm thinking about how do we finish this crop off? Back in 2019, Dr. Sean Castile from Purdue University wrote a paper said we give up on crops too early. Dr. Castile is the extension um, expert on soybeans. So he was talking about the importance of finishing out a soybean crop with potassium specifically. Corn's no different. We need to finish off a corn crop as well. But if I think about those late season demands and what's truly needed to finish off a crop, there's two elements that are absolutely critical to make this happen. One is potassium. When I think about that potassium inside of a corn plant, its highest demand is in late season when it's trying to finish, it, finish itself off. Potassium is directly attributed to yield and test weight. And guys, we like hauling heavy corn and we like hauling heavier beans, right? We don't get paid to haul volume, we get paid to haul weight, right? So if I can bump this up to 62, 63, 64 pound test weight, that's fantastic. Sure, sure as heck beats 53 pound test weight on corn. We've all been there, we've all experienced it, and that sucks. So we wanna make sure that we've got good, heavy, dense corn, and it takes potassium to make that happen. Something to think about. Plants drink nutrition, okay? So you have to have moisture, consistent moisture, when it's raining uh, throughout the growing season to allow that root system to drink that potassium and take it up to the plant. For those of you that are in some drier areas this year, you need to think about that, that uptake in potassium that you've had or limited uptake in potassium that you've had and think about making late season foliar potassium even on corn and we talk a lot about it on soybeans soybeans require 50 percent more potassium per bushel than corn does corn requires 0.8 pounds per bushel um, to to finish this crop off soybeans require 1.2 pounds now overall on a per acre basis just because of the sheer amount of bushels corn obviously takes off a little bit more when we think about those late season um, applications on soybeans, and I'm talking like an R4 to R5, right? In that maturity phase, which many parts of the country are at right now. That's where I'm thinking about making the late season potassium acetate application. On our corn, when it comes to that, that tassel application with fungicide during the reproduction phase, I went ahead and added potassium to this, to this crop, just to make sure I was spoon feeding potassium and making sure it has what it has. I can, my soil can only hold so much. I have mid-teens on CEC. I know that I don't have a heavy enough soil to hold an abundant amount of potassium. So I needed to complement this and make sure that I fed this crop and finish it off. The other nutrient that's really essential to make um, the, the, the year happen and yield happen is boron. So in a, in a corn crop, bean crop, rice crop, cotton crop, canola crop, it doesn't matter. Boron is essential to mobilize nutrients so as to sink. Think of boron like the traffic cop of nutrients. What it does is it directs that flow of, of nutrition inside the plants, and it helps in a late season um, function called source to sink movement. So source to sink. What the source is, it's gonna be the leaves and the stalk. So that stalk right there that you see behind me, these stalks behind me, 80% of the potassium that I put into that plant is stored in that stalk. So what that boron does is it mobilizes that potassium out of that stalk and other nutrients out of the leaves and other carbohydrates and sugars out of the leaves and shoves it into that sink, which is the, the kernel of corn on this crop. On soybeans, it's a pod. On wheat, it's a head, of, a head of wheat. On cotton, it's a bowl of cotton, right? So we want to mobilize out of that plant tissue and stick it into that fruiting site. And that's what boron does. So for me, I always add boron to a late season application with my fungicide, or when I come back um, on soybeans, soybeans I do a little differently. So I do an R2 application, a later R2 application in my fungicide insecticide. I add potassium acetate and I add boron plus a carbohydrate or a sugar package with technology onto it with that, that application. In addition to my late season uh, plant growth hormones. So in that application specifically, I'm going to run Onward Max and I'm going to run Octane and XR5 Boron and, and KSB, which is a 4020 uh, with 5% sulfur and a half percent boron in it as well.
After that, I come back on my soybeans and I hit them one more time at R4.5 to R5. And that's where I really double up on my late season potassium. And I'm going to run a potassium acetate specifically like KSB or a Nutri-K type product. Acetate's four and a half times more efficient in foliar uptake and utilization in plants versus any form of foliar potassium, bar none. So that's why we really prefer to lean towards those potassium acetate formulations. Not all foliar potassium is created equal. And I spike that late season application with an additional pint of boron. You don't need a tremendous amount, like just enough to finish that crop off and allow that, that crop to mobilize its source to sink and put it into that, that, that sink or into that grain and that fruiting site. And those are two key elements that it takes to really finish crops off. Something that we try to put all our eggs in one basket. Most of us, as you know, I'm talking to, to a lot of that's watching this. Most of us put all our eggs in that basket called the soil, right? And we, we go out there and we fertilize with 0060 or 0050. And we depend on that soil to feed that crop all the way through. That's one way that plants eat. Guys, what I'd encourage you to do as you think about your fertilizer budgets is reallocating some of those dollars and moving some of those dollars into a foliar application and making it part of your total fertility program. I'm not asking you to save less. I'm not here to save you money I'm right here to give you a better ROI. And what I've, I've experienced with better ROIs is when you break up that nutrition. I'm not a big proponent of, of, of just cutting stuff out of the soil and doing it all foliar. It's just a part of it. You've got to have that base, right? So keep doing that. Right? But think about reallocating some of those dollars into the right time and putting it on when this crop truly needs it. If I asked you what's the number one nutrient late season that a plant needs, most of you, if I looked at this corn crop, you would say nitrogen. And you would be wrong. The biggest demand of any nutrient is potassium. And it holds true for most every single crop. So think about it as part of your program. Challenge yourself and to, to experience something different and push your yields and see a bigger ROI. Guys, thank you for joining us this year on From the Field. I'm Gunther Krebs. We're happy to have you. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We've got where you can also find us on Top Crop TV and the Farm for Profit podcast. So appreciate you. Have a great harvest this fall.